Hi, this video is all around the design and build of a six metre portable antenna. I happened to mention in one of the club meetings uh, that I wanted to build such a thing and somebody mentioned something called a mini horse antenna, uh, which I'd never heard of. Uh, so a lot of internet scouring came up with oh, really only this table, uh, which you can see on the screen now. Uh, and this is a, a design for a 3L Yagi, a folded Yagi, and you can see the table has various uh, different sizes and specifications for uh, the different amateur bands. So this video uh, concerns the 6 metre version. So I've also been getting into using MMANA GAL antenna modelling software. So I entered the dimensions of the 6 metre mini horse in uh, and calculated the far field plots. And at 10 metres, it comes out at 8.2 dBi, which is 6 dB at 5 degrees elevation, which is where the lower dx will be, and 10.1 dBi, which is 8 dB, at uh, around 8 degrees, so a bit, bit higher. At 6 metres, which is probably more my likely uh, portable operating height, it the best gain I can get is seven point, uh, sorry, 9.7 dBi, which is 7.5 dB, at about 14 degrees. And you can see on those plots above, um, it's not got a massive front-to-back ratio, so... Uh, I suppose in one regard you're not uh, cutting off signals behind you but uh, perhaps it's not the best antenna for, for signal rejection uh, off the back. But overall it uh, looks promising for a, for a folded Yagi. Now I'm sure there are lots of ways of constructing this Yagi. You'll have some ideas yourself, spiders and fiberglass poles and the like. I've used uh, 0.75mm uh, insulated wire. Uh, for a for a stub mast, I've used this forty mil uh, black uh, poly pipe, and this thirty two mil white pipe fits nicely inside uh, to stiffen it up. So that uh, produces a really nice stub mast. If you want to stiffen it uh, where you're clamping it, you could also insert some wood as well in the base. For the arms, there's this twenty mil flexible uh, conduit, uh, and you can get it in white as well. I just went for black. Uh, and something really handy, uh, a twenty mil uh, drill bit to to cut the to cut the holes for the spiders. You can see here, um, the first cut is to uh, ignore the bottom one, the top two spider arms that are just uh, ninety degrees opposite. Uh, you can see here in this uh, this overview shot. So you can see here, I've cut grooves in the end of the four spiders to accept the wire and the the tension in line, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, and I've also marked the uh, the centre of the poles so you know uh, when to stop when inserting them in the stub mast. And to tension up the ends, I've used some fishing line. This was £30, I think, with some just rubber connectors uh, just to hold it at the end of the grooved arms. And in this general walk around shot, you can see the one of the elements uh, folded around the end uh, of the uh, of one of the four spiders. I'll talk about the middle spider in a minute, but there you can see uh, the brown wire wrapped around the end uh, and taped uh, onto the arm of the spider. And once you've finished the build, if you mark on the end of the spiders where the wire goes, you know where to tape it up each time you construct it. So these next two pictures show the theoretical measurements and the total uh, length of the director and the reflector. And the next shot shows my measurements in reality. In the middle one, you'll see it's a little bit out. But the main way to begin the construction is to add the director and the reflector first uh, to the spiders to get those tensions and those 205 centimetre measures uh, front and back. And then once you've got those in place, you can then tension uh, the sides with uh, your fishing line or paracord or whatever you want to use. And as you can see in this shot, more by fluke than design, by cutting the holes at 90 degrees for the uh, corner spiders, uh, you naturally get this twist and tension because it's actually a rectangle that you should be cutting for, not a square. Uh, so those angles wouldn't be 90 degrees normally. Uh, but you get this nice warp effect down the length of the corner spiders uh, and that keeps everything uh, tensioned nicely. Now on paper, everything's a nice tight rectangle. Uh, but in reality, that middle wire uh, running across the middle of the antenna, the A wire, uh, that droops. Uh, and I first tried by supporting it from the top of the stub mast, 
but it wasn't a very elegant way or an easy way to reconstruct the antenna each time I wanted to put it together. Uh, so the uh, middle wire is now supported by uh, this middle spreader uh, that just cuts right across the antenna. Uh, and basically, you'll see in this next shot in a minute, uh, you sight along the rear and front elements. So in this case, that brown wire and the blue wire at either end. Uh, and judge where they line up and then mark where you're going to in, uh, insert that centre spread as you'll see here uh, the blue wire at the back uh, if we duck down this might not be perfect uh, but lining up with a brown wire at the front which is about there uh, and then as long as you've got the centre wire somewhere aligned uh, then they're all going to line up and make it cut in the right place uh, and you can see here it's it's lower down so again back to the top shot you can see the middle spreader now uh, cutting through the stub mast uh, and supporting that centre wire. So here you can see I've terminated the dipole with some connectors and under that uh, temporary applied tape there is some self amalgamating tape onto some Westflex 103 low loss coax. I've also added some optional ferrites, uh, these are left over from my 77s project if you've seen that video uh, and here terminated with a female end plug. Uh, which if you discount the chokes was probably the dearest part of this project. So other than the front and rear folded elements, the unusual thing about this antenna is this centre dipole, which has a, a split ends, some sort of capacitive function. Uh, there's a shorter section there uh, pointing to the rear and a longer section pointing to the front. And it just attaches to the fishing line with tape through that groove there in the end of the spreader. And you can see there they're soldered together uh, and then uh, sealed with some uh, shrink wrap and you can see there the fishing line holds that tight uh, and the uh, the whole antenna I was going to say a square but it's, but it's actually a rectangle and I don't know if you noticed but on the MMA and A modelling it showed the impedance quite low but in reality here 51.1 uh, uh, the SWR is uh, 1.3 which is about there uh, and the resistance uh, is around about uh, 40, 50 ohms. So uh, really pleased with that. Uh, that's on those measurements, uh, virtually identical to the uh, theoretical ones in the original table. So here we have the constituent parts of the antenna, the reflector, the director, uh, and the split dipole wires. Uh, obviously they'll pack down small. Uh, the two diagonal spiders, uh, the center pole, and the main stub mast with holes pre-drilled. So quite a small package when you pack it down. So in this six meter model, this is the length of the diagonal spiders. Uh, and here we've got the length of the, the center spreader for six meters. And now for a build in real time, which I think takes about five minutes. So here I'm pushing through the two diagonal spreaders, uh, the top one uh, and then the next one down. And the pieces of white tape you can see uh, not only mark the centre but they mark the end points for the reflector and director wires. So when I'm taping them on you'll see uh, that's where we start. So now the uh, centre spreader that's going to support the dipole and stop it drooping. And at this stage it all looks a bit wobbly uh, because it's not tensioned, a bit wangy as I would say, but as you see, as I put all the wires on and tension it up, uh, it gets nice and tight. And when you're assembling the antenna in the field, uh, rather than actually constructing it in your workshop for the first time, you connect the side, uh, well I do, connect the side fishing line first and that tensions up the front and rear spiders and gives it some strength and then when it's in a, a nice shape you can then add the front director and the rear reflector as you'll see in a moment.
So now the fishing line's on both sides have tensioned it up. It's time to add the reflector on the back. Um, so I've just got some uh, insulation tape. The white marks show me where I start the wire. Uh, so just wrap it on uh, onto, the, uh, onto the spreader. Uh, take it round to the end, as you'll see in a second. Uh, put it into the groove that I've made in the end of that spider. Uh, and then take it across uh, to the other side. And because we constructed it with this dimension first, uh, I know from tip to tip to spreader is the correct specification uh, because that's all that's left once you've once you've taped it up the side to those preset these preset marks. And so on to the director at the front, which is just a repeat. Start at the white tape marks, uh, take it round the grooves on the end across the front of the antenna, down either side, and onto the uh, right hand white tape mark you can see there, uh, and then the uh, the directors on as well. That's the director and reflector on, uh, it's just a case of taking that dipole side, hooking it up onto the uh, nut and bolt, which is a bit fiddly in this case because I shortened it with a hacksaw uh, and getting the nut to re-thread is, is a bit fiddly, but uh, otherwise it would be quicker. So one side, uh, then the other side and then just uh, tape it up to the arm so it doesn't droop. So there you go, just a final bit of tape to stop the dipole drooping uh, and keep it all aligned with the uh, reflector and the director. And just another quick look at the end of those spreaders with the wires going through and the fishing line being held by that rubber bung. So although I'm going to use this portable, I'm quite impressed with how tough this plastic antenna is. And I think if you increase the uh, fishing line diameter and maybe use better tape to hold it all together, I think that'll uh, be a reasonable base antenna as well. So something worth thinking about. So just to wrap up, I don't think these materials will scale up to the 10 metre antenna, but you could ratio down that table to make a 4 metre. And I think that 20 mil conduit comes in 10 mil as well, so you could make a 2 metre antenna out of that. Uh, but I'm quite happy with this build, uh, just need some conditions to, to try it out in anger in the field. Hope you found the video useful.